As an incentive to stay to the end of this video, I will tell you a brief anecdote which you may find amusing, which proved to me that women were clearly accepted in the Marine Corps more than 50 years ago. One of our subscribers asked me about women in the military and leadership in the military. I thought it would be useful to do a video that showed symbolism, incredible symbolism, and also how we think of both race relations and women in the armed forces of the United States and how Marines think about both women and race relations. Now, I mentioned this in a video a couple of days ago, but I did it toward the end of a two hour video, so I think most of you missed it. And so I want to mention it again. When I was active as a first lieutenant in Washington, DC, we had very tense race relations in our country. Martin Luther King Jr. had been murdered just before I came on active duty. And on the day I reported for active duty, four lieutenants were shot dead in a bar in downtown Washington in their dress uniforms. And so things were pretty tough. And this bubbled along for a little while. But finally, in early 1969, the Commandant of the Marine Corps issued a directive which said, all Marines are green, and that's the end of it. And so for the Marine Corps, that was the end of it. But of course, if you've never served in the U.S. military, you wouldn't appreciate that. And so this relates in part to the transformations that we must undergo as we grow up, mature, and take on responsibility in life. So I want to describe the symbolism and how that works in the military. Now, of course, if you have never served, you wouldn't know that Marines are Marines. Whether they're a man or a woman, they're all infantry trained as a first priority. Every U.S. Marine officer goes to the basic school to become a basic infantry officer first, regardless of what his specialty might be later on. And obviously every enlisted man goes to basic training, whether that enlisted Marine is a man or a woman. And so that means that they have to earn the right to be called a Marine and to wear the Marine Corps uniform. Every Marine, regardless of their duty, is required to be a Marine infantry person first, and then they can take on a specialty. And so I'm going to show you a few short clips of the Marine Corps to express this. And I'm doing this in the form of the evening parade at Marine Barracks, Washington, D.C., the oldest post of the Corps. Now, you may think that it seems odd for the Marine Corps to have bandsmen, and you've probably heard of the President's own or the Commandant's own, the Marine Corps Band and the Marine Corps Drum and Bugle Corps. But musicians have always been an integral part of the armed forces. And when you hear bugle calls in what I'm going to show you, Understand that in combat, it's very noisy, and so bugle calls were the only thing that could communicate between troops that were widely separated. And so in the Marine Corps, people are required to grow up very fast and mature very fast and to integrate what they know very fast and to accept the way things are in a mature adult life. So the first thing I want to show you is a command. In this command, the order giver is the Sergeant Major of Marine Barracks. That means the senior enlisted person at Marine Barracks who's responsible for putting together the parade behind the scenes 
and making sure that every enlisted person at Marine Barracks is in their proper place before the parade begins. So in this particular sequence, which is only 14 seconds long, the Sergeant Major of Marine Barracks gives a command. The command is sound officer's call. Now what that means is that the enlisted Marines of Marine Barracks are ready to go and the bugler is sounding a bugle call to call the officers to assume their positions with their companies and platoons. And so here it is. Now, obviously, the unique thing about this particular call is that the Sergeant Major of Marine Barracks is a black woman Marine. That means she's an E-9. She's probably been serving for th close to 30 years. The bugler is also a woman Marine and a member of the Marine Corps Drum and Bugle Corps. Now, obviously, symbolically here, the Marine Corps has emphasized the equality of all Marines in the Marine Corps. After hearing the bugle call, the officers then take their positions with their companies and platoon. And here's what happens. Obviously, flags have been quite symbolic to human beings over a millennium. And so here you see the Marines solemnly respecting the American flag and the Marine Corps battle color. Our national flag is carried by the color sergeant of the Marine Corps, while the Marine to his left carries the official battle color of the Marine Corps. The 54 streamers and silver bands displayed with the battle color commemorate the military campaigns in which Marines have participated. They span the entire history of our nation, from the Revolutionary War to the combat operations in Afghanistan and Iraq. Decorated with palms, oak leaf clusters, and stars, they represent more than 400 awards and campaigns of the United States Marines. It is the privilege of Marine Barracks, Washington, D.C to be entrusted with the custody of this battle color. For me, our national flag represents the United States of America. It doesn't represent any particular group or religion or ethnicity. It refers to all Americans. Obviously, very significantly, Dr. Jung was against the mass man because Men in masses don't necessarily think for themselves, but obviously, if you're going to have a military organization, and every country must, because there's a general rule that is nobody wants to fight, but somebody has to know how. And so there are occasions when being a mass man makes sense. And when you are a mass man in the US military, you are an instrument of the President of the United States, and you must follow your orders explicitly, just in the same sense that if you're using a hammer, your hammer has to come down in a certain way as expected when you're ready. And so the Marine Corps is the hammer of the President of the United States.
So now I'll share a couple of brief excerpts from the parade demonstrating how the Marine Corps operates as a mass. In this next clip, you'll see the silent drill, which shows you how effectively Marines can operate in the field. We can operate without voice commands when necessary. Now, in terms of further symbolism, this next clip has the Marine Corps Drum and Bugle Corps, and what you will see here is that a black Marine is the drum major, and there are many women Marines in the President's own. So as you can see, black personnel and women personnel are completely integrated into the Marine Corps. So the point of all this is that when you're born, you don't know anything and you have to learn. And as you age, you have further experiences which tell you how we live as mature human beings, both in the United States and the world. And I acknowledge that the Marine Corps compresses your maturing very drastically. But as you see, there is no issue about whether someone is of a different race or of a different gender in the U.S. Marine Corps. But I would not expect someone who has not been trained in the Marine Corps to understand how we operate together in the field. The Marine Barracks Parade represents that symbolically. As a retired officer, I have the privilege of wearing my uniform, and I still do so on special occasions, normally when I'm giving an honor salute to a dying Marine. The Marine Corps had to learn and mature too, obviously. Black and white troops were not integrated in the armed forces until 1947, after World War II. So on one occasion, I had the privilege of giving an honor salute to the first sergeant, the Marine Corps first sergeant, 
who closed Montford Point. Now, Montford Point was a training facility for black Marines, and this particular black Marine was a first sergeant, and he had the privilege of closing Montford Point. When I went to his home with the first sergeant from the Marine Barracks, Washington, there were photographs on the wall of him with many of our recent presidents, I think four or five of them. And he had been honored over his career for the bigotry that he endured in his early time in the Marine Corps, which was before 1957. This is me with the first sergeant from Marine Barracks, Washington, on another occasion. It so happened that the reason that I have these videos is because on that particular evening, I took my four grandsons with my daughter, son-in-law, and wife to Marine Barracks, and this is how I was dressed that evening. As I was preparing to do this video, I happened to look at an old newspaper from Marine Barracks, Washington, which is called Pass and Review. In that old newspaper was a discussion of the training that goes into preparing for the evening parade. This is a 20-year-old newspaper, but what I thought was particularly powerful was a column that was written in that newspaper by the Marine Barracks chaplain. Now, the Marine Corps will come at you with a full package. We have tanks, artillery, F-18s, helicopters. We, we have everything we need to fight a war, including buglers. But what we don't have is chaplains, doctors, nurses, and corpsmen. And so there's been many a Navy man who thought they were going to ride around safely on a ship and found themselves in a trench with their fellow Marines. And so this is a column by a Navy lieutenant, Kenneth D. Counts, who was the barracks chaplain in 1998. The title of his essay is Character, Earning Respect with Actions, Not Image. You know the kind of wimp Tim was. He was thin and weak, with a high-pitched voice. He walked his tiny toy poodle until a man's Rottweiler ate his dog. So Tim got another dog. It was an ugly, stubby-legged, yellow dog, so short that its belly dragged on the sidewalk. When he again met the Rottweiler, Tim whined a warning. The Rottweiler was three times larger than the little yellow dog. The owner laughed at Tim and unleashed his dog to attack, but the little yellow dog swallowed the attacker in three bites. Hey, mister, what kind of a dog is that? Well, before I cut off his tail and painted him yellow, he was an alligator. Ladies and gentlemen, we are proud to introduce the official mascot of Marine Barracks, Washington, D.C., Corporal Chesty the 14th. Pedigree English Bulldog, Corporal Chesty the 14th, enlisted in the Marine Corps on 13 February 2013. The first barracks mascot was named in honor of the most decorated Marine in history, Lieutenant General Louis B. Chesty Puller, a name that has been inherited by every mascot. Character determines what you are and what you can do. Character strengthens or undermines. Character composes the fabric and framework of your life but character gets all too little attention from you, Marine. In our times, external things are emphasized, such as the way you look, the clothes you wear, the make and color of your vehicle. We treat such cosmetic trivialities as though they define our success and happiness in life. External things merely sit on the skin of your life. 
They have nothing to do with what kind of a person you are. They have no connection and certainly no power to make you happy. But we are so shallow in our modern thinking that we exhaust and bankrupt ourselves chasing things we think will make us respected in the eyes of others. When these things fail to deliver the status and feeling of being a big dog, we grow puzzled and disappointed. Character can resolve this confusion. Character is the development of your internal strengths. You do not need to be big on the outside to be truly great. You do not need clothes or cars if you have inner integrity and pride. But you will need to learn how to improve and refine your internal character qualities. Clothes and cars fade and break down, but character endures and increases in worth. Character makes you noble and admirable. No external thing you wear or polish can do that. Respect recognizes what comes out of you, not what covers you like a mask or a costume. Marines see through masks. In spite of your possessions, your character will shine through. You cannot cover and conceal character. If you are of good character, your virtues will make others appreciate you. If you are rude and crude, others will disrespect you. It will be entirely your own fault if you cannot make others approve or appreciate or reward you. Do not feel puzzled, but consider instead what is inside you oozing to the surface. Every time you fill your car's gas tank, ponder character. Oil comes from inside the earth as crude. It is shipped to a refinery where it must be processed when it is refined, it is classed as product productive. That same development needs to recur in you and me. Fine persons like oil and gas products are merely refined crude. We are all crude, but we can each be refined if we just stop being content with our crudity. I found it interesting to learn that the Corps will soon install a new fitness reporting system which will include a section on character. Most Americans do not even give a care about character. Much less do people have a single serious idea about what character is. Looking at the external masks your gaze from the internal. But what you find inside constitutes the real root of all problems and offers promise for real solutions. Marines who can refine their internal flaws can achieve the highest and best. Marines who ignore their inner flaws fall into foolish traps. You think about that. So this has been an essay by Lieutenant Kenneth D. Counts character, earning respect with actions, not image. The Rottweiler was three times larger than the little yellow dog. The owner laughed at Tim and unleashed his dog to attack, but the little yellow dog swallowed the attacker in three bites. Hey, mister, what kind of a dog is that? Well, before I cut off his tail and painted him yellow, he was an alley. <laughs>
I promised you this anecdote. When I was an officer candidate in 1967 at Quantico, we were in the chow hall one time when there was a woman captain present. Some of my classmates were snickering, so our platoon sergeant came up behind them and stage whispered in their ears in the most threatening tone I ever heard. You better stop looking at that officer candidates or she's going to come over here, rip your heads off and shit in the stumps. In my 23 years of active USMC service, regular and reserve, I never saw a woman Marine of any rank disrespected. Not to say that there are no aberrations, but I never saw one. Let me also mention that when I was actively in a reserve unit, the most decorated Marine in my unit was a woman, and her civilian job was being a dairy farmer. She was tough as nails and no nonsense. She retired as a lieutenant colonel.